Ooh, welcome man, welcome back to the channel guys, real quick, I'm back here with this uh, Chrysler Town and Country guys, what we're getting ready to do is, um, we're going to replace the motor mount, it's part two, I couldn't do both, actually I didn't have the parts and I didn't have all the parts and my tools ready, so this happens to be part two guys, what we're going to do, we're going to start up top guys, so we're going to do the transmission mount and the upper side mount, okay, we'll do those now. And uh, like I say, uh, not gonna be able to film everything, but I'm gonna get y'all as much as I can. So, in order to do this, the battery had to come off. Actually, the battery should come off anyway, uh, off. But in this case, the whole battery got to come out of the car along with the tray to get to the transmission mount, and of course, to get to the side mount, the whole air cleaner system got to come off. Fairly easy, guys. Uh, I let y'all see as much as I can, guys, but we're going to start up top and we'll do the two lower mounts uh, when we get done with this. All right, y'all ready, man? Let's get it. All right, guys, real quick, I'm getting ready to remove this brace, guys. In order to gain access to that transmission mount, uh, you got to lower the transmission a tad to clear. I see that bracket under there? To clear this bracket. I don't want to have to take this bracket out. So in order to bypass having to do that, I will have to lower the transmission just a tad. Now, you got to make sure you're not going to snag anything such as this ground cable. All right, maybe wise, just take that out because what I'm going to do just remove this brace right here let the car down we're going to sit on this I suppose it should be a jack stand but i'm using this this piece of wood to hold the engine up and then i'm going to have to let the car up so the trans will fall down so i can gain access to that transmission mount all right guys let's get with it Alright guys, I have the old one out. Wasn't that bad. It uh, wasn't that easy. The only thing I was jamming up on guys, the bolt that go in this hole. See actually, they should have made this slotted guys. Like these brackets right here. That should have been slotted so I can would have been able to leave the bolts in place and just slide it down. Because you ain't dealing with nothing at that point. You're dealing with nothing. See now I'm going to have a hard time fighting not setting it in place but starting the boat simply because i don't have the transmission all the way down that's the lowest i can get the transmission uh, by the way guys you will have to have this on i'm sure you know this some type of jack stand block whatever you choose to use you will have to lower the transmission in order to gain access uh properly to the transmission mount all right now this mount hardly gets any work guys so it really wasn't worn customer just want uh want to sleep well at night knowing he got them all replaced i guess all right give himself a peace of mind okay well i guess uh, there's a little crack right there so it was time me uh, 140 and well, i think 150,000 miles in this car but this wasn't what this wasn't what was making the bump and the jerk when you accelerate but this plays a small role in it so I take that back. Uh, it's the perfect time to replace this. And we're doing them all, so there's no discrepancy. All right, but uh, like I said, guys, uh, the installation is merely a reversal of the removal. All right, let me take these stupid tags out of here. We're gonna get this thing set into place. And we're gonna get it replaced, and then we're gonna move on over to uh, 
this one here. That one's fairly easy, guys. I'm not gonna um, film the real easy, easy stuff. Uh, some of the stuff is self-explanatory. So let me get going, guys. I'm not gonna film the rest of this. Like I say, this is just a reversal of the remover. Just set in there, bolt it down, jack the engine back up, or jack the assembly back up, and uh, just merely put your bolts back in there. They're gonna connect to here. So it's all pretty self-explanatory, all right? So next time you see me, guys, we're going to be tackling this one, which is the same um, same scenario, guys, okay? But we're going to do it. I, I'll take you all along for the ride with me, guys. Stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. We are now getting ready to do uh, the right side, okay? That is this engine support, engine mount right here, okay? fairly easy i have a jack stand underneath the car i have a small amount of pressure on the engine that basically pushed up on the mount so now when i take the three bolts off actually the mount should come right up yeah all right so we got the top three out let's get these uh bottom three out this one is probably the easiest one out of all of them guys if you ask me, okay. Um, this one you probably can do at home on the ground, DIY style. But I'm spoiled. I've look at that. Come straight up, guys. Nothing to it. Okay. Whoa. Yes, guys. I take that back. It was time. Now I'm gonna tell you something, guys. If you got this aftermarket, you likely wouldn't have got this bracket like this. So you would have, in, in essence, saved maybe $50. This is a Mopar M mount. Keep in mind, guys, mounts, engine mount, engine support, anything like that, it's all based on the quality of the rubber insulation. Okay? The bracket's going to pretty much be the same. This is a bracket, and this is a bracket. What they put in between the two brackets is a rubber bushing insulator, whatever you want to call it. Now, the quality of that, uh, determines the quality of the mount itself okay so if you got this from advanced auto you would have only gotten this and it's fairly easy to transfer this bracket to your new mount so this is one case I uh, you know tend to not brag on OEM because it could be considered overkill <laughs> I mean I guess they under the assumption when they built it they was under the assumption that you're not gonna have the bracket it's just I don't know what the assumption was, but this is one instant of overkill, guys. So, uh, yeah, your mounts could be uh, any brand, in my opinion. These are my opinion, guys. You know, uh, yes, I should be pushing Mopar. I love Mopar. I love OEM. I'm a big OEM fan, but like I say, sometimes it can be considered overkill. In fact, I think most of the the auto parts store now uh, giving you lifetime warranty on engine mounts. I have no idea how is that possible because it is an engine mount that will wear over time. <laughs> One or two things. They don't expect you to bring it back. They don't even expect you to own the car in another year or so. So that's what a lot of these parts department are banking on. I bought a set of brake pads that was lifetime warranty, guys. How in the world can you sell or make a profit selling lifetime warranty brake pads? Of course, those brake pads are going to wear. And I'm never losing my receipt. And I hope they got me. I think they got me in the computer. So, all right, guys. I'm finished this up. This was fairly easy putting this on. I'm going to bolt this back down. Next time you see me, we will be under the bottom. Remember, we already got the transmission mount on. Now, this mount on. We did everything on the upper end. Wow. Look at that. So, now we're going to finish this and let it up and do everything on the bottom end. Stay tuned. All right, guys, we're back under this underbody with the engine mounts, engine supports that we are doing. I'm getting ready to do. Yes, this one was shot. Okay, notice I have the long uh, brace bracket off. Okay, it is right here, guys. All right, you have to remove that in order to place those, guys. All right, and be careful with this bolt, guys. That's the bolt that always get damaged. But as far as the engine mounts, guys, I'm not going to film all of this. You can see how easy this is. Simply remove the bolt. As far as the rear, it is also easy, but if you notice, I have a jack stand under it because I will have to lift the engine up a little bit in order to get this one out. People always say this is the hardest. It's not hard at all. In fact, 
let's get it man let's take it out right quick okay you have the two front boats right here all right i already have this one loose all right so let's get this boat out we have two boats right here guys all right actually we have four boats but let's get let's get this one out i already have them loose and we're gonna get the other one out and the two in the rear all right let's get these out so guys once all these boats are removed and you have the engine support you have the engine jacked up a little bit this mount should yes oh. wasn't bad at all guys here it is Yes, so quite frankly, they did good to do. go ahead and do all of them. These are the last two I'm replacing. Ooh, yeah, so guys, when you put it in the gear, this is what was bumping. Boom. All right, that is bad. Yes. A lot of guys would try to press that out and put in a new bushing, press in a new bushing. So much cheaper and easy to just replace. And guys, like we talked about earlier, these don't have to be OEM. It's just, you talk about the quality of the bushing at that point, but I would do OEM if they was available. If not, we we'll have no problem using the aftermarket engine support mount. All right, so guys, I got a little work to do. I'm going to finish the rest of this up off camera. Just wanted to make sure you guys got a, this one is real easy. Just remove the boat. And it comes right out. So that's all I have, guys. Thanks for watching. Come and subscribe. And I'll see y'all on the next video.